Today, we are making a super easy countdown timer infusion. This is great if you wanna make a custom countdown for your stream or for an event. You can stylize it however you want, and I'll give you the basic techniques to get it working. We're gonna make this infusion, and what's really cool is you can take this fusion comp and just drag it into a timeline and make it whatever length you want, and it will automatically count down from that time. So if this is 39 seconds long, it goes from 39. If we make this more like 15 seconds, then it counts down from 15. Isn't that sweet? So easy to do. So let's make this ourselves. I'll go into my media pool, right click and say new fusion composition, and we'll call this count down two, because I already have countdown one. Let's hit create, double click on countdown two to open it up in the fusion page. Now, even if you don't know fusion, this is still very easy. All you have to do is just follow what I'm doing, okay? We have our media out node right here. Anything that we connect to this is going to actually show up on screen. So we're gonna start with a background. Let's just grab this very far left icon, the background, and just drag this into our graph here and take the little gray square and connect it to the media out like this. Now we have a black background. Yay, we did it. Now we need the actual timer on here. We're going to use a text node. This third icon over with this T, that's a text plus. Grab this, drag it here, and we're going to have to merge the text over the background. We can do this a few different ways. One way is we can grab this icon here, this merge icon, and just drag this in between the background and the media out. And if this line highlights yellow and blue, then we can drop this on and it's connected in between those two. Then we take the output of the text and plug that into the green and we have it merged over. And I can select this text and normally I could just type some text, right? But instead of that, we're not even going to type the text, we're going to right click in here and go down to time code. You're going to want to do text timer. Don't do text timer, do time code like this time code. Then everything's going to be really confusing. You're going to be like, what do I do about this? How do I change the time? If I type this in, can I, why, why doesn't it, what, why is it broken? Why is it broken? <laughs> why are you the way that you are? All we have to do is go over to modifiers here next to tools. And here's where we can adjust some things with this timer. I'm going to turn off frames and I'm going to turn off hours just because I want a minutes and seconds countdown. That's going to turn this to zero, 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 zero. And now if I play this back, you'll see this counts up, which is sort of like what we want, except for it's exactly backwards. So we're just going to run this through a time filter to have this countdown. Of course, if you want this counting up, well, you're, you're basically already done. I mean, you basically got it in the bag. So let's take this text plus and I'm going to add Add a node after this called time speed. The quickest way to do that in Fusion is to hold shift and then hit spacebar. And that will bring up this nifty select tool menu. And I'll type time. And what we want is this time speed right here. I'll hit enter on the keyboard. And now time speed will show up like this. And all we have to do is select that and go up here to the inspector. And here where it says speed, just type minus before one and hit enter. What that's going to do is reverse the time of anything we run through this node. And so guess what? When we go to the beginning, this is at four. Then it goes down to three, two, one, like that. Awesome. I mean, that's most of the work, honestly. From here, we can stylize our text. So I could take the text size up. Let's just make this a different font. I like Lee Gothic. Maybe push the tracking out just a touch. And I'm going to anchor that on the left, actually. So this horizontal anchor right here, boop, click that, and then kind of bring this back in and center it. And that's so when the numbers change that it doesn't kind of move around. Whereas if it's aligned to the center, as the numbers change width, see it kind of like twitches. So to avoid that, just anchor it on the left and then place it roughly in the middle. And now you have this nice little countdown. So if you want a really basic countdown, this is so simple. So all of the magic is done, basically. If we go over to the edit page, get rid of this, we can take our countdown two that we just made, drag this in, and by default, it's going to count down from four seconds. But if I push this up, I can make this whatever length I want. If I want this to be a 30 second countdown, just start at 30, and boop, and it just counts down. So simple, so easy. Anybody can do that. You don't even need to know anything about Fusion. And what's nice is, again, even if you don't know a lot about Fusion, you could go into Fusion and just select their text and change the font and the size. You know, if you switch over to layout, you can change the rotation, the color and all that stuff. So let's just have this rotated a little bit. I'll just kind of put this towards the middle. And if you're not that into Fusion, I mean, you could just take this background and turn this alpha down like this. And now you can use this as a layer on your edit page and then, you know, use whatever you want as a background and you can kind of combine it that way. That makes it really simple to kind of build something that you want in the edit page. And again, you can make this longer or however long you want your countdown. So if you don't really want to dive into the Fusion page a whole lot, you kind of have your own customized countdown asset here that you can use on the edit page and combine with other layers on the uh, on the timeline. But if you want to take it to the next level, you can do some fancy stuff in Fusion. If you're new here, my name's Casey and I want to teach you how to use Fusion. I have tons of videos on that, including a free 
free workshop on the nine nodes that you need to know to make so much stuff in Fusion. If you feel like you go to the Fusion page and you're overwhelmed, this is a perfect starting point for you. Totally free workshop. There's a link up there as well as in the description. Okay, let's take a minute and stylize this timer in Fusion. I'm gonna get rid of our timeline stuff and just go back and double click on our Fusion composition. And now maybe let's make a new background. I'll just click on the background and drag that here. And this time, instead of dragging a merge node down, I'm gonna take the output of this and just plug it into the output of the background. And look, it makes a merge node right there automatically. Isn't that cool? For this background, we're gonna make this fancier. Over here in type, let's go to four corner. And I don't know, let's boost up some of these corners here. Let's make like a cyan-ish kind of corner, maybe a dark blue, green, something like that. So now we have this kind of fanciness going on. And you can do anything you want to kind of stylize this. Oh, I like that. Maybe we'll do a little bit of that. That's kind of nice. Maybe we'll go a little more purple. Yeah. Let's say that we want this to be sort of like a flickering, kind of like a lens flare. I'll show you a fancy trick here. If you go to the merge node, there's this slider called blend, and that's just the strength of the foreground. That's the, the opacity, the transparency of the foreground layer here in this merge. And if I right click on this, I can add all kinds of stuff to this, including some modifiers. And let's modify this with Perturb. Perturb is a modifier that's built into Fusion. And if I go up here to the top and click on modifiers, I can adjust this modifier that I just connected. And what that does is it kind of wiggles this number back and forth. See, when I play this back, it kind of moves the slider back and forth sort of randomly. And so you can adjust how fast it goes and how much it moves it and how wild it is. But check it out. Now we have this kind of randomly pulsating background that looks like we spent a lot of time doing some fancy lighting or light leaks or something like that. But all we did was just make this background. If I hit one on the keyboard, we can see the background by itself. And then we just merged it over the black background and kind of just turned it up and down a little bit. I'll go over to our modifiers here and let's just take this strength down a little bit, make it a little bit more subtle. There we go. Maybe take the speed up a little bit. Yeah. And so you can play with this however much you want. You can push the wobble up a little bit and it kind of is a little bit more wild. It's smoother if you turn the wobble down the speed down a little bit just so we have a little bit of pulsating kind of movement give a little bit more life a little more character we can take our text and stylize our text a little bit we can do something like go over to the fourth tab which is the shading tab and here we have sort of like different layers to stylize our text with and so by default there's a solid fill but if we go to the next one we go to element two and click enabled that's going to add a big red outline to our letters now i probably don't want this red so i can go down here and maybe we'll just make this kind of a purple maybe a kind of a darker purple Purple. Yeah, just so that adds a little more contrast to the edges there. Looks pretty nice. We could also go to number three, which by default is a drop shadow. Psh, leave it like that. Easy way to make a drop shadow. We could also play with the position of the shadow. Be able to just bring it down like that. Play with the softness. Push the softness up on Y a little bit. It's nice. It just kind of has that nice soft shadow. And now we've added a lot of style to our timer. Not that much work. Let's do one more thing. Maybe we'll take a texture. I just have this paper texture here. If I bring it up in our first viewer. I'm just hitting one to bring it up on the left viewer and two to bring things up on the right viewer. So this is just kind of a grungy texture and I'll just merge this over everything again. And I'll just look at our final result, which is our media out here in our second viewer. And let's just take this media in and I can either select the merge and then just push this size up like that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Or you can also add a transform node like this, put that in between the media and the merge. The reason I like doing that is because you can see that you're transforming things before you merge it. Whereas you might not notice if you're just doing this sizing in the merge. I like to keep things laid out here in the nodes so I can always tell what's happening just by glancing at the nodes. So I'll push that up, take this merge, and then for the apply mode, let's just go to multiply. And now we have this subtle paper texture over things. So now we have a much more classy countdown with not a lot of effort. Pretty easy, right? Let's do one more thing. After this time speed, let's add another transform node here. And let's use that same perturb thing to kind of move this around slightly. But this time we're going to adjust the center, which just lets us move this text back and forth here because we're running the text through that transform. Let's right click on center and just say modify with perturb. Now by default, it's going to be crazy sauce. It's going to be crazy land. It's just going all over the landscape. Well, look at that, Gina. That's uh, one of those uh, one of those weird kids <laughs> wandering around the yard again. If we go to modifiers, we take this strength all the way down. That's going to make that calm down. And then we can just push this up a little bit. Maybe take the speed down a little bit. So now we just have a slight wobble here. It's just moving ever so slightly. I almost don't even notice it. It gives a little bit of character to this. Maybe a little more than that. Oh, might, might be a little bit more than that. 
Yeah, we'll push the strength up just a touch. Get that moving. Yeah, there we go. Now we have a fancy boy. Turn the speed up a touch. Strength down, speed up a little bit. Yeah, cool. And again, just like before, we can go to the edit page, drag this down, make it whatever time we want. 43 seconds, great. And now we have this and it's going to go forever. We don't need any keyframes. We don't need to animate anything ourselves. It just continuously does stuff. And you have a nice little countdown, business countdown. I hope this has been helpful for you. Just a reminder, if you're new to Fusion, make sure to check out that nine nodes workshop. I'll put a thing right here. And I also want to know, do you want to fancy your timer? You want to get even crazier? Let me know in the comments and I'll make a fancy schmance timer. Here's another video I think you'll like. And uh, and yeah, what kind of fancy timer do you want? You want maybe 3D? Maybe some particles? Maybe get textury? We'll see. Will you just tell me?